Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I thought I'd share with you my entire collection of Tilly and the Buttons makes. Um, now, I planned to do this video quite a while ago and some of the makes I've made quite recently and I've probably shown them in a few other videos um, and talked about them a bit more there. I hope this video isn't going to be a bit too repetitive, but um, I'm not going to talk too much about them. I'm just going to kind of show you them and say what fabric I used and what I thought of the pattern and that kind of thing. So hopefully um, it will be okay. I really enjoy making these collection videos. Um, I've done a sew over it one now and I've done a Darling Ranges dress collection one now, so I couldn't really leave out Tilly and the Buttons. So um, I thought I'd make one anyway. And it's really good fun to kind of get out everything I've made um, from one particular pattern designer and realise how much I actually have made um, and realise which ones I liked best and um, yeah just kind of have a look through them all. So I'll get started and as usual I'll tell you first about what I'm wearing. So this is my Agnes top um, as the first and only Agnes I've ever made. Um, I did share it in a recent makes video so you may have seen it there already um, but obviously I made the puff sleeve version of the Agnes top, which is this one. And I really, really love it. I'm a definite Agnes top convert now. Um, as I mentioned before, it kind of put me off um, with the neck band and I thought these sleeves were going to be really difficult to get in. But actually, um, as with all Tilly patterns, it kind of came together really quickly and really lovely. I'm definitely going to be making more Agnes tops in the future. So that is my make number one and I made that quite recently now. Um, so carrying on with the jersey theme, I've got three Cocos to show you. So the Coco pattern is another jersey pattern and it's just kind of a slash neck top, is it? That you'd make with like a Ponte Roma fabric and it's a really sort of quick, easy jersey pattern to make. So my first Coco, I decided that I wanted a stripy version similar to the one in the picture. Um, and this was my first version. Um, what I'll do is I will insert some pictures because obviously you're not going to be able to see what they look like properly with me just holding them up. So I will insert some pictures of me wearing them so that you can see. Um, but this is the first Coco I made. Um, stripy kind of nautical version with three quarter sleeves and um, just the kind of standard neckline. Um, what I do do with the Coco is because I find it comes up quite A-line um, and it's a bit too A-line for my liking. I did take it in quite a bit down the side seams. Um, so from like where your natural waist starts to where it ended, I just took it in I think a couple of centimetres on each side just so it was a little bit straighter and it's still quite A-line so I'm happy with that. But yeah, that's my first. Coco, it's such a quick and easy pattern to make. It's definitely a really good one if you're just starting out with jersey, um, like I was when I made that actually. And because um, it's a Ponte Roma fabric, it doesn't shift around too much and it's really easy to work with. So yeah, I really love that pattern. So next on the Coco theme, this is my second Coco dress. And um, same again, exactly the same as my stripy one. I've just done a three quarters sleeve. Um, and the standard neckline that I've made exactly the same alterations to the side seams just so that it's a little bit narrower on the hips than it is um, in the actual pattern and for that I've used a kind of mustardy floral Ponte Roma which I got from Sew Over It quite a while ago and I just recently made, well not recently but I made this just as it was kind of turning to summer so I haven't actually worn this in real life yet. Um, so I'll insert a picture of me wearing it. I don't think I've even actually got any full length pictures of me wearing it. I took a quick couple of snaps for Instagram. Um, so I'll pop one of those in anyway. But I'm really looking forward to wearing that come awesome winter with leggings and boots. Really cosy, lovely dresses to wear. And you'll notice that I had a little bit of that stripy fabric left over from my first Coco dress. Um, and I thought to myself that I'd try a little cropped Coco t-shirt. So I've just used the Coco top pattern and I shortened it by a couple of inches and I just used a short sleeve pattern. I think I actually just cut the three quarter sleeve pattern a little bit shorter um, just to give that short sleeve. And then you can see that I've just done a little split hem at the waist 
and so I'm really pleased with how that turned out. It's a definite, it's a really, really quick, easy t-shirt pattern to kind of whip up and because I had a little bit of scrap stripy fabric left over from that dress, it was just the perfect kind of scrap busting um, project really. So I'm really pleased with that. Okay, so moving on to trousers um, and play suits actually, which are kind of like trousers I suppose. Um, I have one pair so far of marigold trousers um, in this lovely kind of drapey floral navy viscose um, and I absolutely love these. These were so quick and easy to make. Um, I think I don't think I've ever actually made a pair of trousers before I made these um, and I was really worried about making them because of the fit and I'd heard that lots of people had to alter the rise of them on the waist um, and people would have to make quite a lot of alterations so it did put me off a little bit but I'd had this fabric for ages and I thought to myself that I'd just give it a go and see how it turned out and actually it came together really easy and um, I think the only alterations I made for these were just to take an inch off of the waist so that they didn't come up quite as high as they do on the pattern and then I think I took about two centimetres off of the length in my usual way, I probably just did it as I went along and didn't actually write down what I've done. So when I come to make another pair, I'll have to make the same changes again and work it all out. Must start writing things down. But yeah, really, really pleased with those. Actually, I'm not sure if I've ever actually got a picture of me wearing them. Um, I'll have to have a look. But if you do want to see them kind of in action, I'm wearing them in my fabric haul video recently, I think. So I'll link it down below and you can have a look at what they look like on there. But yeah, love those. Super, super comfy. So continuing the trousers, I have a pair of Sophia culottes. Um, actually, I think I wore them in my most recent video. Um, so if you want to see me wearing them, I'll link the video down below. So they're the Sophia trousers from the Make It Simple book. And they are those ones, Sophia trousers. And I just cut them kind of mid-calf so that they were more of a culotte length than like an ankle length which um which the pattern actually is cut for i think it's cut for an ankle length rather than a culotte length but i just cut them a little bit further up my calf because that's just the style that i prefer these are a bit creased actually because i've just washed them um but yeah this fabric was actually stuff and still viscose i got it from the knitting and stitching show and i think i only had about a meter and a half and i managed to get them out of that so really good to stash buster again and i'm sure um you can make a pair of shorts out of that pattern as well just like some quick and easy elasticated shorts which I've yet to try but that would be a good thing to do actually uh, something really kind of quick and easy to make but I really really love the supplier trousers so that's those okay so I also have two play suits to show you and you may have already seen one of them because I did them as a sew along um, so if you want to if you're interested in seeing this play suit being made up. Um, I do have a video of me making it, so I'll link it down below if you haven't already seen it. Um, but this is the first Sophia play suit that I made, um, again in a stuff and still viscose, which I picked up from the Knitting and Stitching show. Um, and this fabric, I'm really, really impressed with stuff and still fabrics. They're really lovely and drapey and soft and they just feel really good quality. Um, and this fabric, and um, the fabric I just showed you from my Sophia culottes, the first fabrics I ever bought from Stuff and Still. Um, but yeah, really, really impressed with the quality of their fabrics and the prints are really lovely as well. Um, and I feel like they're a little bit different um, to what you might find in other fabric shops. So love Stuff and Still, but yeah, this is my Sophia. Um, so as you can see, I've done the shorts version and I just followed the pattern exactly as it was in the book and I made a size two. I feel like my face is getting really bright with the light of the day. <laughs> it's a really kind of stormy light outside, so I'm sorry if my face is looking a bit yellow. Um, I can't really tell what it's like on camera, but yeah, it's a strange light outside. It's kind of bright, but dull at the same time. Anyway, I'll continue. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my, my first supplier play suit. Absolutely love that pattern. It came together really, really lovely, quick. Well, quick, it took me about three or four hours to make, quicker than I thought it was going to take anyway. Um, and it's just lovely, really, really love it. Um, so I will pop in a picture of that here and I'll link my video down below if you're interested in seeing that. 
So the other version of the supply play suit I made was a um, culotte length version, which is going to be very difficult to show you on the camera here. So I'll, um, I'll insert a picture, but it's basically the exact same top as with the shorts play suit. And then I've just extended the shorts pattern to make a culotte length trouser. Um, and again, I've cut that about the same length as my uh, Sophia culottes come to, about mid-calf. I did wonder if I could use just the Sophia trouser pattern and attach it to the top, but when I put the two together, um, there was a bit more waist length on the culottes, sorry, on the shorts pattern for the play suit. So I decided to just extend the shorts in case I lost any of the um, waist allowance in the pattern. But I think since then I've seen that other people have actually done that and they've just attached the trousers to the top, so maybe I could have done that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this fabric is a really lovely navy, kind of peach skinny viscose, I think. I'm not quite sure what it is. I got it from John Lewis in the sale um, many moons ago and it's quite, I've had it for ages, so I probably won't be able to link, link it below, but um, I'll try and link something similar if I can. Um, I really, really love that. I'm really pleased with how that turns out. It's quite kind of baggy, um, which I don't mind. The legs are quite wide, um, so it does kind of give a bit of a dress feel, like you might not know you're wearing trousers unless you um, kicked your leg apart <laughs> um, to show that you're wearing trousers, because the two legs together, they are quite wide, um, which I think is really nice, because it looks like a dress, as I say. But yeah, really like that. Um, and I've yet to wear these actually. I um, haven't been out enough to wear all of these clothes, but I'm enjoying making them. Okay, so on to dresses and tops. I haven't got that many more actually to show you. I thought there was loads when I got them all out, but um, actually I'm getting through them quite quickly. <laughs> so this, you've probably seen before maybe as well, if you if you watched my other videos. This is the Mimi, Mimi blouse, is it? Or the Mimi blouse. Um, and that's from the Love at First Stitch book. So it's a sort of vintage-y, um, I don't know if it's 60s or 40s actually, I don't know what era that blouse is from, maybe someone can tell me. But it's um, a really, really cute sort of um, vintage inspired blouse, um, which I've made from a really lovely see-through chiffon fabric, which I got from Minerva, and that fabric was actually gifted in exchange for a blog post for them, which I'll, I've done and I'll link down below. But um, absolutely love this pattern. I really love the details in it. I love the yoke back. Um, I love the really pretty, like the yoke detail on the shoulder there as well. And then the, the cuff, I've used a really busy print for this, so you probably can't see all of the details. But um, the sleeves have actually got a little pleat here as well, which is really pretty. And I like to make another one of those in just like a plain viscose or something that could show the details a bit more, like a white, just a plain white drapey kind of um, white version of that would be really pretty. Next up is the much loved indigo pattern. So I absolutely, love this. When it first came out I wasn't sure actually whether this style would suit me because it's kind of, um, I don't know, oversized and I'm not normally one for sort of oversized dresses but as with everything I kept seeing more and more lovely versions on the internet and on Instagram I thought I really need to give that a go and now I absolutely love it. So um, I bought the paper pattern because I prefer to do that and this was the first version I made in this pretty um, really lovely, uh, I think it's a peach skin. It's kind of silky, um, but quite drapey. This was from Material Girl Laura. Um, I highly doubt that she's got any of this left in stock, but um, you never know. So I'll try and link it down below if I can. Um, but yeah, I really, really like this. It was, it was quite difficult to sew, actually. I'm not going to lie. It was quite difficult to sew, quite difficult to gather. Um, I'm not sure if it's something to do with the fabric, probably just me. <laughs> I did try to do the kind of frill gather along here, but I just couldn't really manage it very well in this fabric, so um, I just stuck with the normal gathers. But yeah, really, really like this. Um, yeah, not really much else to say about that, other than that I love this pattern. And I wore this to the Knitting and Stitching show, actually, and so many people asked me about this fabric 
um, and said how pretty it was and what pattern had I used to make it and everything. I was quite pleased. Uh, so another indigo that I made um, was this viscose version, which I added a frill to the bottom to. Um, I'll pop a picture in as always. Um, this was actually another blog post for Minerva, so the fabric was gifted and I'll link my blog post down below which I've written now. Um, I really really do love this dress but um, <laughs> I've been thinking about cutting it into a top just because um, with this the fabric for this is like a viscose twill and it's quite heavy so with the extra fabric that there is in this hem when you're wearing it it does feel quite heavy so I haven't been wearing it that much for that reason even though I think this dress is probably my most like pinned pin on pin dress and it's probably one of my highest liked um, photos on Instagram it was really popular and I was really happy with how popular it was um, and I do really love it and I love how it looks it's just not that comfortable to wear so I am considering cutting it into a top so you probably can't see but the waist finishes here is quite a high waist um, so if I had sort of a bit of a frill it would be kind of like a baby doll top with a frill on the bottom kind of like how the indigo top is I guess but maybe just a bit shorter um, than the one on there if you can see so I'd probably cut it to be quite cropped so you could wear it with high-waisted things but yeah I'm still wondering what to do about that let me know what you think would you cut this into a top or would you just keep it um, it seems a bit of a shame because it was quite hard work gathering that frill into the bottom but if I'm not going to wear it very much as it is I'm just wondering if maybe I need to cut it into a top to get more wear out of it I don't know I'm still thinking about that one and finally I don't want to go on about this dress too much because if you have been watching my videos you would have seen this already um, and I have been banging on about it quite a lot on Instagram and that so I won't go on about it too much this is my most recent Tilly and the Buttons make and this is a hack of the Sophia wrap play suit top and the Tabitha rectangular self-drafted skirt bottom with a drawstring waist uh, made from a, another viscose from Minerva actually um, and I made this as a kind of sew with me recreating a high street look um, type vlog which I'll link below I won't talk too much more about it because um, I don't want to bore you all with tales of this dress but I do really love it and um, it was a really fun hack to do and I really love how the Sophia patterns are really hackable and you can kind of swap them around and make them into different things. I really love that one. Probably my favourite make so far actually. And lastly just to mention I haven't got them here to show you because they're packed away in my winter clothes um, under the bed but um, I do have two Cleo pinafore dresses um, and I'll insert pictures of them so that you can see what they look like. I've got one denim version and one kind of navy needle cord version of this pattern and um, I absolutely love it but I think next time I make this I'm going to make it slightly more A-line um, just because it is quite straight and I find it clings to tights quite a lot um, and I know quite a few people have, have lined this so that you don't get that problem and I might try and do that next time um, but yeah I, I just find it's a little bit straight um, so it could actually do with a bit more A-line on this one um, so next time I make that, I think I'm definitely going to try and just make it a little bit wider over my hips. Um, I love my needle cord version of this, but the denim one is just slightly too tight and not really very comfortable. So yeah, I think I'd need to stick to the same size I always make, which is a size two, but just maybe make it a bit more, <laughs> a bit more so that it goes out over the hips. I do but have one other Tilly in the Buttons pattern actually, um, which I got for Christmas. And that is the Dominique skirt um, and I haven't made that yet so I've got a lovely kind of bottle green viscose fabric um, that I'm really looking forward to making this up with so I'll keep you posted about that one but yeah this is a pattern that I'm really excited to try I'm not quite sure why I haven't tried it yet actually but I think it would be a really lovely summer skirt um, before we go too close to autumn and so I'll try and get that made up while it's still summer and then I think I've got uh, just enough of a scrap of like a grey viscose jersey that I might try and pair this skirt with um, which could be made into an Agnes top just a plain one without the puff sleeves and just short sleeves and a scoop neck 
and I think that would look really nice together if it works out how I'm imagining in my head. So yeah, have you made this skirt yet, the Dominique skirt? Let me know any tips or how you found it. Um, let me know how you got on with it so that I know to look out for anything when I'm making up my version. Okay, so that is my entire collection of Tilly and the Buttons makes so far. So, so far, because I'm sure there's going to be many more on the horizon that I'll be able to share with you soon. Um, I'm really looking forward to making up my Dominique skirt. Actually, the Alexa jumpsuit is another one that I have on my list that I'd really like to try. Um, do subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it and leave a comment if you'd like to. Um, what to do in the buttons patterns have you made? Is there anything that I should try that I haven't already tried? Um, and let me know how you found the patterns that I've shown here. Um, yeah, and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.